What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today I'm back in my kitchen with all of my just washed dishes. So, you know, can't, can't, you know, disrupt the, uh, <laughs> the, the pattern here. Um, today's video, as you can tell by the title, is what I look for when buying a fountain pen and what I look for in a fountain pen. Um, Stephen Brown, so SBRE Brown, did this video many, many months ago. And ever since he posted it, uh, I have gotten questions from you guys saying, what do you think of his video? Do your thoughts align? Like, what do you look for? All this kind of stuff. So I thought I would throw in my two cents. And for the most part, I agree with virtually everything he said. <laughs> I mean, at this point in my fountain pen life, I've been through it all. I've used a $2 pen, I have used a $2,000 pen, and a variety of things in between. So I don't need pens. <laughs> I have enough pens. From a practical, you know, usage standpoint, I don't have to buy another pen my entire life. Never. I probably never even have to buy any more ink for the rest of my life. But I do. So clearly there's something that I'm still looking for. So what is that? <laughs> and it's a few things. Um, so for things like, you know, the Caveco Sports, I'm up to 10 of these now. I don't need any more. Um, do I buy every limited edition that comes out? No. Do I buy a lot of the limited editions that come out? <laughs> yeah. Um, because I really like them. I like collecting them sort of. Like I don't get into like the aluminum versions. I have a couple, but like they're not really my thing. Um, I don't have any of the art collection, the steel, anything like that, because they're too expensive in my opinion for, you know, and you, you can't beat this. Um, you know, so sometimes when I'm looking for a pen, it's just to add to the collection that way. Um, you know, it's nothing like super duper special. Um, but for the most part, I look for a couple things and I brought, the Leonardo pens, since that's kind of like what my latest obsession is. The Leonardo pens and Pilot pens seem to be my main bread and butter these days, uh, at least this year. <laughs> uh, and that is, I look for really nice material. So material doesn't matter. I don't care what the material is, whether it's resin, celluloid, whatever. I don't care. I just want it to look good. Um, so something like this is injected molded. Obviously, the material is kind of neither here nor there, but when looking for something like this, you know, this spaghetti resin, the depth of the material, the like look of it, it's, it's high quality. I very much enjoy it. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, when I look at it, I am just nothing but happy. Um, and ultimately that's, that's what I want. Um, you know, something that when I look at, I know a lot of care went into making. So there's, there's kind of two extremes, right? Something that you know, I know a lot of work went into, um, a lot of care, a lot of thought went into, and then something that um, I can just kind of keep in my back pocket, sort of the two twofold there. Um, you know, I know that they've gone through many iterations of this. They they have thought through the design um, to, to sort of make it more than just a pen, because ultimately, ballpoints are everywhere. If you just need to write something, you have access to whatever you want. Um, so when I'm looking for something like that, I'm looking for more than just rights. I want it to be beautiful, well-built, uh, will last me forever. <laughs> um, and something that a lot of, not necessarily a lot of time, but like a good amount of thought and energy went in behind. Um, of course, I want it to write well, um, you know, there are some brands that I kind of stay away from because they're notorious for not writing well, um, or I just haven't had good experience with. Um, so even if they come out with another pen that is beautiful, I just, I don't go for it. Um, because I know that even though it looks beautiful, it won't give me the writing experience that I want. And ultimately that will take away from the look of the pen. Um, so, it, it has to balance that. Um, now, I'm lucky enough to have been able to try hundreds and hundreds of fountain pens at this time. 
and I'm very aware of what I like and what I don't like in pens now. So when I buy something new, it's I know pretty much if I'm going to like it before I even get it. Um, and that can be frustrating for people in the beginning of the fountain pen hobby. And I understand that. I remember that um, when you would buy a pen and you just hope and pray that it, it's good. Um, because I've had both ends of the extremes. I've had pens that I've purchased and then was just blown away um, by how it performed, like the Diplomat Magnum. Um, I was shocked, shocked at how great that pen was. Um, I didn't love the look of it. I didn't love the feel of it as far as like, you know, it's it's closer to, to this side of the end than this end. But the way that it wrote blew my mind away. Um, whereas at the opposite end of the spectrum, and you guys know where I'm gonna go here, <laughs> pens that look beautiful are built well, thought through and through, um, but don't write well for me is pretty much any Twisby. <laughs> and I know that people love those pens. Um, and I understand why, like not everybody wants what I want. Not everybody wants a super wet pen um, that isn't stiff as a nail, but some people like Peter Draws, for example, would because he wants something that's super stiff because it's easier for him to draw with without having to uh, factor in um, the variability of a softer nib um, that could affect his line. He wants a super consistent tight line um, and Twisby offers that. For me, that's not what I want. I don't draw, you know, when I am cursive writing, I like that responsiveness feel. Um, so that's the beauty and the annoyance of this hobby <laughs> um, is that you do, you have to go through a whole bunch of different pens in order to find what you want. So if Twisby comes out with a new pen, like they just did a few months back with like, the, I think it was called the Draco or something like that. It looked beautiful. It looked like everything that I would look for in a pen like in this Leonardo here, but I know that I'll be disappointed with how it writes, so I didn't buy it. Sometimes I get suckered into buying pens <laughs> that are, you know, just another model of something I already have, but for the most part now, I do look for something a little bit different, um, and I'm also now not necessarily buying a pen just to try it out, but to actually use, and I mean that in the sense that I will buy now from people who will tune the nib for me before it even gets here. Um, I can do it myself, I just don't want to because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, and I can only, I'm only comfortable doing very, very basic tuning. You know, making it a little bit wetter, a little bit smoother, like just baby steps. I am not someone who can fix broken nibs, um, like bent tines, like the stuff that Nibsmith posts on his Instagram. That stuff is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> I would never be able to handle that. Um, could I spend the time and energy uh, learning? Absolutely, but I don't have the desire to. Um, so for me, it's not worth it. It's just, I would rather buy even something as simple as this, like a, a 20, $25 pen. I'd rather buy it from somebody who can smooth it out, make it super wet, like basically make it right very well by the time it gets to me, especially with Caveco because they do have consistently inconsistent nibs. Um, <laughs> so this way when I get it, I just pop it open and it is good to go. Um, I do also most of the time factor in where I'm buying from. Um, I try as hard as I can to support um, like actual pen companies uh, who in my mind uh, are, are worth it. Um, I, I don't have that many options to do local. Um, you know, Wonder Pens in Toronto, I buy from, um, Lay Wayne's in Toronto, I buy from, um, but the, the selection is a little limited. Most of the time I do purchase out of the U S. Um, I try and stay within Canada, but it's just so hard because there's not much here. Um, so buying out of the US, that adds customs fees and you know the dollar exchange and all this kind of stuff, which can get a little expensive. Um, but because I'm buying way less frequently now, um, I do try and support companies that I think add value to this community. Um, so 
I mean, pretty much all of you guys are gonna be aware of Goulet pens, for example. They are not always the cheapest, and by not always the cheapest, I mean basically ever. <laughs> Um, you know, they don't do sales often. And if they do, it's usually for like, you know, local US folks. Um, and between the exchange rate and the shipping costs and the customs fees and stuff like that, it, it never works out for sales for, for international people. But I appreciate the time and the effort that they put into the community with all of their videos. I monetize these so that it is somewhat worth my time. Would I do them if they're not monetized? Probably, but significantly less frequently. Um, whereas those folks, they put in a whole crew into those videos. Um, and I know just how much this takes, let alone the, uh, caliber that they put out. <laughs> um, so I very much appreciate that. I appreciate them more even watching them go through this pandemic. Um, you know, like they, they keep putting out that they're taking half days, uh, almost like once a month, it seems just for a little bit of a mental health break. Um, and as somebody who works in a very busy retail environment that has stayed open throughout this pandemic. Um, man, I appreciate that. I know what that takes. I know what the toll takes on the individual. I know how exhausting it is physically and mentally. Um, and I, I appreciate that um, from somebody who knows a little bit of what it's like to uh, be working in this time frame. So something like that, like giving their whole staff a half day paid to not work. That's fantastic. Um, and I admire that. Um, so I want to help support them by placing orders. Um, you know, Gold Spot Pens, like they put out really amazing videos on YouTube as well. Um, and again, I know what that takes. Um, so I want to try and support as often as I can the companies that I from what I can see, every, obviously you nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors, but from what I can see, um, have decent values, put something into the community and like, you know, take care of their people. Um, so as often as I can, I wanna try and support them as well. Um, so there's a bunch of things when I look at a pen. Um, of course, if I've never seen the pen before, that was Parker. <laughs> So for example, like Leonardo, I had never used a Leonardo. So when I bought the very first one, I had no idea. Now I am, I've got like four or five of them now. Um, you know, same thing with my, my pilots. Um, when I find something I like, I get a few of them, not necessarily like literally the exact same thing. They all have different nibs, they're different looks. Um, my pilots, even though I have two um, 823s and two 912s, um, they both have different nibs. The 823s are different colors. So there's a little bit of variability there, but for the most part, I get what I like. <laughs> um, and yeah, so basically it needs to be well-built, well thought out. Um, you know, like, do I find the this necessary? No, but other people will, and it doesn't impede the look of it, the functionality of it. Um, you know, the rollerball clip, I like. It works really well to actually clip things on. I like the grip section. It looks funky, but it means that multiple people can use it in different areas. Like just the little thoughts that go behind engineering a pen rather than just making a rod, fill it with ink, boom, you know, like having that thought process. Um, so <laughs> kind of long winded today, um, you know, just, uh, just turned on the camera and just started talking, but that's pretty much what I go for now. Now, sometimes, you know, I don't always go with like something that has to be, you know, handmade and, and can be machine turned and things like that. Like I'm thinking of the Diplomat Arrow. I just purchased that. It hasn't arrived yet. Um, but, you know, not as much hand touches go into that. Um, but it's still really, really well made um, from everything I've seen and from everything I expect. It's going to write really well. Um, obviously I don't know yet, but, um, you know, it's, it's unique. And I think that's what I also look for now is something that makes it different from the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pens out there. Um, I don't really look at cost, um, because that's a touchy point with people. 
obviously like if I like the pen and I don't think it's worth the cost. So for example, the Caveco Sport, I think this is a perfect pen. Do I want to pay over a hundred dollars for a different material? No, I don't because I like this. <laughs> so cost plays a factor, but I'm also starting to, you know, appreciate sometimes pens that even do have steel nibs that are a little bit pricier, but a lot of thought and time and effort goes into making it. So I can see that now. Um, I'm a little bit less of a gold nib snob, <sighs> not entirely, but a little bit. Um, now granted, um, I'm a paper snob now. Anything that isn't Tomoe River is like not worth my time. <laughs> But who knows, that could change. And that's the beauty of our hobby as well. So those are just some of the thoughts that go through my brain when I look at a new pen. Um, I'm happy that I don't necessarily have to jump at everything new that comes out. Do I still have the instinct to look and, and learn about it? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I don't have to buy all of them anymore, which is nice. I still get suckered in, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but I don't have to anymore. Yes, Parker, we will go play, baby. Um, so that said, I hope you took something out of this video. I hope that answered some of your questions. What are some of the things that you look for? I almost knocked over my water. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. What are some of the things that you guys look for when buying fountain pens? Are they similar to the mine? Are they totally different than mine? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like it every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A on Tuesday. And if you're still watching this video almost 17 minutes in, you, you are the reason I make this video. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. And as always, I'll see you next time.